Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and staying with us on this uh, day two of CMA Industry Week as we continue on the uh, cool list of partners that Importel Distribution has and that are presenting today. Uh, I've gone through a plethora of different categories and here we are, uh, we've landed on one that I know for a fact we're going to have a lot of fun with. Um, it's a unique brand that, that has unique qualities and it's all led by a very unique individual. But to tell us a little bit more about AudioFrog, we're going to get Kelly Holly, the Director of Sales for Importel, on with us. Hey, Ben. Nice How are you, you doing, sir? Good to back see you again. again. Yeah, back again. I, I see you're smiling, and I'm smiling too, and you know <laughs> why. Because uh, our next guest is, um, is an interesting character. Andy is an interesting char character, absolutely. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this session. I think it's going to uh, be enlightening for a lot of guys, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of Andy's personality, what he brings to, uh, in which he brings to his uh, audio brand as well. Uh, I, for one, would be very disappointed if you didn't. Yes, definitely. You know. uh, but before we do that, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, Importel and AudioFrog? Well, we go back a couple years now, two or three years. We've uh, took and take, took on Audio Frog as uh, as our upper end, higher fidelity audio brand. Um, at that time, um, it's been a fun ride. Uh, Andy builds some very good speakers that sound incredibly well. Um, I put Audio Frog as a brand that's built to fit needs within vehicles. Um, you know, just very application-based product. There is uh, so much chatter about this brand online, and Andy himself is very um, proactive in that discussion. And, and some of the, his views and the thought process have gone behind the design and engineering of these products is certainly some of the things that we want to touch on. But really, we want to understand, for those who have may, might have heard the brand, curious about the brand, um, I'm really hoping that we get a chance to kind of do an overview and understand what the what the offering is, and then and then be able to pick his brain a little bit and and explain why this is something that you need to pay attention to. Absolutely, I think every time I sit down with Andy, I learn something new. It's yeah. it's like wow, I didn't know that. That that's cool. Like, and I think the more you listen to him, the more you learn, and the more you realize just how good his product is. Well, let's find out from the man himself. We won't keep you waiting any longer. Mr. President of Audio Frog, we got Andy Waymar joining us. Hi. <laughs> hey, Andy. Welcome to CMA Industry Week. Thank you. Um, Hi, Andy. Thank you for taking the time and joining us from the West Coast. Yeah, that's my pleasure. Um, and since I, this is my fair, and since this is my farewell Zoom, we got to make this a good one. So this is it. This is the the, the farewell tour. There's never going to be another con concert. The brand is breaking breaking up. This is it. Yeah, that's right. Pete Townshend has left. Has left the building. Yeah. No more. Um, anyway, thanks for having me, guys. Um, and thanks for all of that introduction. I think that, that you guys do a really good job of making that kind of stuff up. You know what? It's what it's what we do. You know what I mean? We we kind of try yeah, to illustrate and make, make, make this stuff up. And, you know, at least we'll have something to talk about that's either fictional or non-fictional. But it will probably end up being a blend of both. Yeah. Make it sound like this dude knows something, right? Yeah. yeah, let's make it so. Let's put him on the spot. You know what I mean? Put him on the table and see if he can what dance. Do I, do we do this now? Do I, do, I, do I share my screen? No, not yet. I'm not ready for that yet. Oh, well, okay. No, no, no. We got time. See, last time I only had 10, 15 minutes with you. Now I got an hour of you to myself. So I'm going to milk this, just so you know. Okay. Um, I want to hear the story. Where did Andy go from... You know, being a car audio enthusiast, I know I, I got a little bit of the story and you work for other, you know, people and stuff like that. But really, what I want to know is when did it click in your head that Audio Frog should be a thing and you had a vision for it? Oh, well, so that happened while I worked. But that, that happened in a previous life. That happened while I was while I was working another job uh, for 20 years or so. And at, at review time, I would always get. I mean, I always maxed out the review. How that happened, I don't know. But but they got to ding you somewhere. They got to say something bad about you. Um, um, so every year for like 18 years, what they said was, oh, he doesn't really understand the commercial aspects of the business, which was kind of true at the beginning and kind of not true at the end. But that was the ding. That was the ding. That was the ding. And and it, if any of you have ever worked corporate, you know that, that 
what they want you to focus on in performance review time is all the crap that you're not good at, right? And I used to think, man, I do not understand this. I'm great at a bunch of stuff and I suck at other stuff. And some of the stuff I suck at, I hate to do. And at review time, it would always be like, well, you need to improve this. And, and I thought, why would you want me to work really hard on stuff that I'm no good at? Anyway, so, so after being told that I didn't understand the commercial aspects of the business for 18 years, uh, they forced me to learn them. They forced me to learn the commercial aspects of the business. And when I did, I thought, oh, so I got something you guys don't have. And I know the category. All you guys know is spreadsheets. And now I know spreadsheets. And that was the point at which I thought, hmm, maybe something, maybe doing something else is better. Um, so I called a bunch of friends and raised a bunch of money and we did audio frog. And that's the story. Okay. And 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 to preface all of that, I started as a retail installer when I was a kid, um, when I was like 20, and I was a I was a I was a, I was the worst retail installer ever in the history of the world. And then by the end of nine or so years, back when back when Mira or Mobile Electronics Magazine was called Installation News, I was one of those top 50 or top 12 or or, 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 or whatever. <clears throat> so if, when you open up the products, you go, man, it looks like somebody who like actually turned a screwdriver once installed these or, or designed these. That's why, because that's what I used to do. Okay, so installer, rebel against the corporate world, Decided to gather some 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 cash with an idea and uh, launch Audio Frog. Why did you feel Audio Frog needed to happen? Because all I know how to do is car stereo, and I'm I would like be in a basement making beaded necklaces if I knew how to do anything else. Um, <laughs> so that's why. Actually, so the reason is because towards the end of the towards the end of the Great Recession. Um, there was a lot in the great during the Great Recession. There was a lot of business to be done in emerging markets: Indonesia, Russia, China, um, uh, Brazil, um, and places like that. Uh, lots and lots of business. Um, but at the end of the recession, when money started flowing back in the opposite direction, there was not a whole lot of business to be done in emerging markets, and all the business to be done was in was in the uh, um, was in already emerged markets that had been under recession. Um, and so many of the brands focused so much of their effort on emerging markets by making less expensive products could be purchased by people who didn't have a whole lot of cash, that that became the brand. And during the recession, um, uh, domestic sales teams had really, really, really high sales targets. And the only way they could make those sales targets was to bring in all of that stuff, all those $39 speakers that had been made for emerging markets. And that it re-emerging from seven years as as uh, as entry level is super difficult. So I really felt like there was an opportunity right at that point uh, to enter the market with uh, <clears throat> with higher end stuff um, um, that was targeted at enthusiasts. Um, because frankly, the commodity business in car audio has moved online. Um, and in order to provide, you know, great performance for, for consumers, we need people who know how to install. Uh, so for me, it just seemed like the, seemed like the, the time was right. And I built a big business plan and I was going to be like filthy rich in two years. And the reason to have a business plan is so you know what's not going to happen because that's not going to happen. Um, so here we are eight years later and, and, uh, and things are going good. Um, so let me get this right. Brands, you know, long Long-standing car audio brands are feeling the effects of, like you said, the recession, and you know they're thinning out their line. They're going for more affordable, consumer-friendly, cutting corners, so on and so forth. And here you're like, this is a great opportunity for me to come to the market with a specific niche, high-end. Yeah, sort of product line. Interesting. Sort of. Okay, sort of. let's fast forward a little bit. Um, we want to get into the line. We want to make. Say, we got dealers watching. Some some customers watching may already be customers of Importel, of course, welcome. But of course, there may be some that aren't in customers of Importel, which is also great, which is why Kelly's here. But we want to present the Audio Frog line to them as if they're seeing it for the first time and really get an overview in a sense. If you don't know who Audio Frog is or you don't know who this gentleman is, um, here's where you're going to find out. So why don't we go ahead, and if you don't mind pulling up your presentation, we can start with that, give you an opportunity to kind of walk us yeah. through that. So I'm going to be a technologist here. No worries. Uh, while you're doing that, screens, while you're doing that, I want to talk to Kelly. Screen. Kelly, what has the reception been so far with AudioFrog? It's been great. Um, you know, we've we we continue to grow. We continue to make 
inroads with it, opening more dealers, getting um, more support for the brand, uh, and we're just going to keep growing it. It's a, uh, it's an incredibly uh, great sounding product, and people need to uh, get on board with it. Well, let's find out why from the man himself. It's all yours, Andy. Hey, so I have a question. So, so I'm I got two screens going here, and I don't know how to do this. Um, so do you see, like, is the whole screen the PowerPoint, or do you see the presenter it's a, mode? It's a full screen right now. Okay, so I did it right. Yeah, you it did is. it right. <laughs> and, uh, it looks beautiful. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, uh, this is the opening slide. Uh, you'll notice the, the brand logo at the bottom right. Um, <laughs> so what is Audio Frog? So we should start... Um, we should start by having me talk a little bit about the various things we do, because what what uh, people probably know, at least in North America, is that we're a car audio company. We've got some other stuff going on um, uh, in other parts of the world. So primarily, we're a car speaker brand. Um, we're working on some other stuff. We're working on electronics, um, which has been a long road to hoe, or a long road to hoe, uh, because of all kinds of problems. Uh, COVID was a problem. <clears throat> um, the AKM fire is a problem. The fact that there aren't even microcontrollers available for Ford Motor Company is a problem. So we're working through all of those and we'll have some additional stuff here coming up. So we do car speakers. We also do pro speakers and electronics. We do things like little bitty line arrays and big huge line arrays and, and dual 18 inch subwoofer cabinets and 2000 watt professional amplifiers. Um, but that's a business that's primarily done in Asia. Um, in Asia, it's run by our office in Singapore. We have an office in Singapore. We have an office here in LA. Um, so in Singapore, they do they do a bunch of pro. But COVID has basically shut down live performance venues all over the world. Uh, so this is a business that is kind of on break um, until this uh, until this stuff ends. Um, but these speakers also these speakers also sound super great. Um, and then thirdly, we have uh, one more category that, that that we will eventually continue to add products to, and that's test gear, which is right now a USB microphone uh, designed to be used with any number of uh, PC-based analysis tools. The one I suggest is REW. Um, but this is this is this is kind of like not my first microphone, not like Fisher Price my first microphone, but this is a basic microphone. Um, that's really sort of designed uh, to help guys tune cars. Um, it comes with a little stand that you Velcro to the headrest. It comes with a with a CD with a bunch of technical tracks that are designed to help you uh, get the sound right instead of, I think I've got this tuned and let me put on a Nora Jones track. I have no idea exactly where Nora Jones is supposed to be located, but I think she's kind of supposed to be in the center. Um, so this comes with a with, with a with a CD with a whole bunch of test tracks that 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 are specifically designed as tuning tools and and um, um, uh, it's only 199 bucks. Um, we've sold, I guess, at this point about 1,500 of these things. Um, probably 60% to probably 60% of these have gone to believe it or not DIYers and enthusiasts all over the world. Hmm. I just shipped one to China yesterday. Um, and about 40% to retail, uh, to, to retail technicians. So this is a really good category for us. And, and if you go to the AudioFrog website, which is AudioFrog.com, and then click on test gear at the top and scroll to the bottom, you'll find a couple of, uh, couple of documents as downloads. They're free. One of them is a, is a long explanation of how to tune a car and why this is the right way to tune a car. Um, <clears throat> um, and this, frankly, this this microphone kit and all the audio frog speakers are designed uh, to, to make that process quick and easy. So those are the three parts of audio frog. Um, what we'll talk mostly about today um, is car speakers and a little more about this microphone kit later, um, which is what I just said. All right. So audio frog car audio is, is made up of three series of speakers. We have GB speakers, uh, which are our top of the line components and subwoofers. We have GS uh, speakers, which is which are premium performance uh, components and coaxials. Um, 
They handle less power than GB. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we have G-Series, which is a single component system. Um, and it's kind of designed for easy replacement in factory systems, uh, where, a six, where a six or six and a half inch component system uh, is what's being replaced. Uh, so a pretty simple short line of, of, uh, of really great stuff. Um, and, then, uh, then, and then test gear, which I just talked about. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. <clears throat> okay. So GB series components um, um, and subwoofers, these are high-end speakers that are designed for cars, which is which is distinctly different than the origins of high-end speakers for cars. When I started uh, installing, which was which was so long ago that 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 uh, we installed stereos on like horses and, oh, and God. horses and donkeys and. <laughs> Covered wagons. Speakers, high-end speakers. When I started doing this, were 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 home speakers that that somebody had like taken out of the. Basically, they were they were things in the parts department of home speaker companies, right? Um, uh, woofers were designed for big vented boxes, and um, mid ranges and tweeters were huge and not really designed to fit. Every job we did was custom because there was only a four by ten speaker location in the dash. Um, but that's not how this stuff works. That's not how this stuff works anymore. Um, but there are there are quite a few high end um, speakers that are that are really kind of left over from home audio drivers, or they're sourced from home audio driver companies. Um, these things are designed uh, for cars, which which uh, means a couple of things. The first thing is that they kind of fit. Um, they kind of fit. They're not direct drop in speakers, but they're correctly sized. Um, you know, they're, they're not super deep and all of that kind of stuff. Um, many of them are designed for specific applications. Uh, GB25, for example, is designed so that there's no box that's too small. You literally cannot put this speaker in a box that compromises its low end performance. And the reason for that was that a two and a half inch speaker is about the right size to go in a pillar pod. And some of those pillar pods are really small boxes. And if you put a speaker in those things that requires or was designed for an infinite baffle, you get a high Q response and no bass, um, uh, which is kind of the opposite of the rationale for putting a larger speaker in the, you know, in an A pillar. GB40s are designed for infinite baffle so that they're so that they're perfect for the doors of a BMW or a dashboard or, or whatever else. Um, GB speakers are designed to perform even with a lot of power. A lot of high-end speakers are kind of like wedding cakes, right? They're they're beautiful and they sound nice, but you have to be nice to them and you have to baby them and and watch out. You know how you don't want to turn these things up. That's not how this stuff. That's not how this stuff works. Um, you can drive these things. You can drive these things really hard and they still sound crystal clear, even at even at high volumes, um, which is designed for low distortion. They're also designed and tested to last a long time, and we'll talk about that um, at the end of this presentation. Um, I think they include the industry's best mounting kit. We'll talk about it. I have some some uh, line drawings of how that works later, but but these are grill kits and and uh, <clears throat> mounting kits that that will that make it easy for a, you know I mean a DIYer can figure them out and, and there are a lot of parts, but if you're a pro, you know how to do this. There are big time savers. We include stuff in the box that would take a really long time and be dangerous to try to make on a router table. Um, and there are all kinds of ways to customize using the parts that come in the kit. Um, and as I mentioned before, if you use them properly, they're easy to tune uh, using this process and and and, and our microphone. <clears throat> so, a couple of important features: ultra low distortion is <clears throat> is one of these features, um, and that provides mid range clarity and high frequency detail even when you even when you drive these speakers hard. But things that contribute to that are single layer voice coils. Um, Maybe you've heard of of, of uh, um, two layer or four layer or sometimes even six layer voice coils. These are single layer single layer voice coils. The wire is is flat. It's milled into a little rectangle, um, and it's a copper clad aluminum, uh, which is not good for a power wire, but it's excellent for a voice coil where we need to to precisely determine the resistance of the. Uh, of the wire, and also because it's a single layer, it dissipates heat on both sides. In multi-layer coils, um, uh, the inside layers have to heat the outside layers in order for the heat to get out to the to the top plate. So this is a way to make speakers handle handle more power. Um, 
The GB60 also includes two shorting rings. There's this copper cap that goes on top of the pole piece. And there's also this aluminum shorting ring at the base of the pole piece. All of the GB speakers have this copper cap, including the, uh, including the tweeters. Only the GB60 has this second ring, and that's because it's a kind of a, a longer excursion driver. And this helps to minimize distortion when the voice quote moves a long way. Um, other things are that these speakers all have flat spiders. Um, the spider, this part right here, this spring, is contributes the most distortion to the out, to, to the output of a speaker. And this is why we say that that you shouldn't drive a speaker below its resonance because at resonance the speaker has basically no control. And below that, it's all up to this up to the spider. But there are some things that you can do to make the spider work better. And not having a, a not having a big wall right here. If you look at some speakers, you'll see it's a cut spider. The the edge that's glued to the basket is in the center of the rolls. That's kind of a big deal in terms of making spiders that are low distortion. Um, the pole piece here and the and the vent are all uh, machined or or, or polished, um, and that's important because that vent is really there uh, not as a voice coil cooling device, but as a noise minimization device. So flaring the output of that thing helps to reduce basically port noise in the back of the in the back of the speaker and then all the gb speakers also have a vent in the basket under the under the spider which also helps to to eliminate mechanical noise um <clears throat> so the other the other real feature or benefit in gb speakers is that they they do this super low distortion work even when you drive them hard um, most of these speakers have have 30% or sometimes even twice the uh, excursion capability of other similar products at similar price points. Um, as I mentioned, single layer copper clad aluminum coils uh, dissipate heat more efficiently than copper. Um, and the neodymium magnet, in a, in a speaker with a neodymium magnet, instead of there being a top plate and a big magnet in the middle and then a back plate, um, the neodymium magnet, which is this blue thing right here, goes in between the top plate and this back plate. So the, the number one thing that contributes to power handling in a speaker is the, is the coil, its proximity to steel, which acts as a heat sink. So the closer the coil is to a bunch of steel, the better it is. <clears throat> um, and that's precisely what this giant steel cup is, is a big heat sink. Um, uh, for this coil. So that helps with thermal power handling a whole bunch. So I was talking about industry's best mounting kit. This is what comes in the box with the mid-range. For a six inch, we include this multi-adapter. Um, so you can screw the speaker to this to, to this adapter and the adapter to, to all kinds of different um, uh, mounting locations in the door. You don't have to use it, but it's there if you, uh, it's there if you want to. Um, we also include a, sort of a full grill, which is this this piece here is is a uh, cast aluminum so instead of making wooden rings if you're going to do some fab you can you can mill that on a router you can cut it you can sand it so the bondo will stick to it so you don't have to cut uh you don't have to cut wooden rings and this chrome ring here comes out and there's enough space between the chrome ring and this aluminum ring that if you're going to upholster this because you've bonded it into a panel or something like that. There's just enough room for the vinyl to fit in. So the grill, making the grill, which is, which is in my experience, the biggest hassle in, uh, in trying to fab up panels to get all that to fit right, that's already done for you. And then this, this metal grill, um, has, there's a little rubber U-channel that you put on and it fits into these clips. Um, but, but this metal grill can be can be painted, color keyed, however you want. And we include some rub off logos in the package so that if you need to paint this grill a different color, you can put logos on. Um, if you if you don't want to use this whole, you know, if you're not working on a, on a 1984 Buick, Buick Century um, and you don't want to use this whole big metal grill, you can, you can not use this. You can cut a hole for this chrome ring right here slide the chrome ring through and bend these tabs back to hold it in against another metal plate that goes in the back. Then you can mount the speaker from the front and the grill goes in. So all you see is this chrome ring on the front of the panel and the grill, which is a pretty popular, there are lots of chrome rings in cars now. Um, so that's a pretty popular look. 
Um, so all kinds of stuff that you can do, um, all kinds of stuff that you can do with these kits. When I started showing these years ago, when we launched them, I had a bunch of dealers ask me, oh man, I make all that stuff. I, I don't need all that stuff in the box. Can I just buy the speaker? And I was like, no, but I'll tell you what I'll do. If you save all these parts, I'll buy them back from you. Put them in a box, take care of them. I'll buy them all back from you because somebody's going to want them. I have never in six years bought any of these products <laughs> and all of the guys who said oh i make that stuff they were the first ones to put up pictures on facebook of the cool stuff that they were able to do with these uh the cool stuff they were able to do with these grills um um so the tweeter um it's helpful to, to at least glance at the manual there aren't very many words in the manual but there are a lot of pictures and that's where these these pictures came from um, but I've had people call me on the phone or send me a Facebook message saying, hey, man, what's that spring in the box for? And I'm like, uh, uh, let me get a screenshot for you. Anyway, uh, people think these are napkin holders and all kinds of stuff. But, but this, is the, <clears throat> this is the flush mounting kit for, for, for the tweeters. So instead of a spring steel part with big legs that stick out this way where there's sometimes no room for them, we just, we just made a spring which is better because it provides a constant force all the way around the speaker. Cause sometimes if you have to cut one of those legs off, the speaker does, there's no, there's nothing pulling the speaker in, in that area and it's hanging out of the door panel. People glue speakers in because of this, but this works really well. And then if you need to mount the speaker behind a panel, the tweeter behind a panel or like in a dash location where there used to be a, a mid range or a, a speaker with a larger basket, then, then this is kind of the old backstrap mount, except it's way cooler because uh, the backstrap is built in. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. And if you're going to fab up um, A pillars for these tweeters, you could use this bracket instead of all of that cutting a wooden ring and getting a thousand popsicle sticks or, or uh, you know, gluing all that stuff up and, and then wrapping cloth around it because you can bend these tabs any way you want. You can screw them to the A pillar and then there's a ring that you screw on the front of this, and you can just wrap the cloth around this whole deal because there's room in between this little grill ring and the tweeter for that cloth. Again, so, just, just like the mid range. Yeah. Right. So we, yeah. so we, all this, we, we tried to make all this easy, and it's pretty cool. It's helpful to at least glance at the manual the first time you do these, though. Um, and then in GB, we also have we also have subwoofers. Um, um, so there are two tens and two twelves. They're I call them dual impedance rather than dual voice coil. They are dual voice coil, but there's only two terminals. There's two terminals and a switch. So uh, like a GB ten D four can be eight ohms or two ohms, and a ten D two can be one ohm or four ohms. Um, so two wires to connect, flip the switch, and that's how you choose the impedance. Um, these are three inch copper coils. They also have the the shorting ring. The the copper cap on top of the pole piece, which helps to reduce, um, uh, which helps to reduce distortion. Um, <clears throat> they'll go in small sealed or vented boxes. These are kind of an SQ sub that also can can play loud. They're not they're not an SPL competition sub because they actually make bass. Um, <clears throat> and low distortion in these speakers makes blending uh, the sound of these speakers with the front speaker, so you get a, an illusion of the bass being in the front of the car, is much easier um, with these, and that's partly because of that, uh, partly because of that shorting ring and the fact that the frequency response is extended into the mid bass um, makes it makes it quite a bit easier. All right, so that's GB series, um, GS. GS speakers are are a step down from that. Um, these are still premium priced and the and and still premium performance. Um, none of this stuff. Audio Prog is not a manufacturer. We we do not we do not fly around all over the world and go grocery shopping for speakers. Um, these are all designed from the ground up. Um, we spent a fortune tooling all this stuff. Um, uh, so no manufacturing here. Uh, we design all of it. Um, and all of it's really kind of designed to be best in class performance and sound quality, um, uh, you know, at, at, a, at a price. The GS tweeter kit is the same as the GB series tweeter kit. So the spring and the, and the <clears throat> what, what one of the dealers here calls the tweeter cannon, which is that big bracket thing. Um, um, 
all of the coaxial models have a second order high pass filter, 12 dB per octave high pass filter, and a 6 dB per octave low pass filter built on a little PC board inside the basket. Um, so this, this makes it possible for us to cross the tweeter over a little bit lower, it makes it possible for us to contour the frequency response a little bit for better performance at the crossover, um, and allows the tweeter to handle a little more power. Um, they're designed to fit easily um, and to sound great in most factory locations. Um, all of the GS component systems are sold a la carte. We don't sell them as a system because when I used to be an installer and when I travel around to, to see dealers, there's always a big box somewhere in the bay and that box is full of passive crossovers. <laughs> uh, uh, and now the box is, nobody ever does anything with them except use them on other speakers, which is a really bad thing to do because passive crossovers aren't interchangeable. But the box is now so heavy that nobody can carry it out to the trash. So this seems like in the days, now that we use DSPs and, and build lots of active systems, it seems silly to me to include something in the box that would just be thrown away. So these are all a cart. Buy a mid-range, buy a crossover, buy a tweeter, and you have a system. I'd be hard-pressed to think, Andy, that at this price point that people wouldn't be opting for the active channels and DSP. We, so for GB speakers, it's probably 95% or maybe even more active at that price. Uh, for GS, um, I'd say probably 60% go out as active systems and the rest are, are in fact, we, we, you know, we, we just ran out of GS 410Cs, fortunately more on the way. So um, um, people still use passive crossovers at this price point, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of it goes out as active too. And then we have two relatively new speakers. GS 25 is about a year old. And then we have a GS 8 ND2, which is more popular than I imagined that it would be. We've been out of those for a couple of months, but the uh, but the boat leaves on uh, boat leaves on Friday. Um, so GS twenty five, and that's the picture up here in the in the in the top. Well, we'll talk about that later because I have a whole slide for that. Anyway, GS components come in standard sizes. Uh, GS components are uh, four inch, six inch, and six by nine inch. Um, a one inch tweeter, four inch, six inch, and six by nine um, uh, as components. Um, so these crossovers are pretty much optimized, right? So there's a GS610C, and that one is for use with a GS10 and a GS60 or a GS690. And the GS410C is for use with a GS10 and a GS40 or a GS25. Um, so so that gives us a little better opportunity to optimize the crossover because a four inch and a six inch are not particularly similar <laughs> um, in terms of their high frequency performance. So that's why there are two crossovers. And my suggestion is not to enter, not, not to interchange them. The tweeter mounting kit here is the same as the one I showed you for, for GB. These have a really flat and natural sounding frequency response. Um, um, you'll discover that when you put them on the boards and you switch back and forth between them and something else. The fact that the mid-range is flat and natural sounding um, kind of enhances them in terms of their efficiency. They'll play a little louder than most other speakers, um, but vocals will sound more realistic, um, uh, a lot less listening fatigue. Um, I've taken samples into stores and like borrowed a screw gun and put them in the board. And then at the end of our little meeting, I would go get my screw gun to take them out of the board. And they're like, no, 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 no. Just let me give you a credit card for those. <laughs> um, so, so the demo, the, the, the demo works. These things sound great. They are, they're about two ohm coils, a little more, 2.3, some 2.5, some 2.8. Um, the box says four ohms because there's there are enough of us to answer that particular call all the time about hey is my factory system going to run this or is this okay with, with with factory amps or whatever else so these are designed to be to, to to work just fine with factory amplifiers and with amplifiers designed for two ohm loads um there's this eight inch shallow subwoofer which we'll talk about in a minute which is the gs8 nd2 um and that's it for GS components. So the GS25, this is a this is a full range speaker. You can use it with a tweeter. Cars always sound better with tweeters, but there's a real opportunity for, for this speaker to make stuff easy. 
So this was designed to be an easy upgrade in Bose and Harman systems that use a two and a half inch speaker in the dash. Um, it can be used as a mid-range with a, with a tweeter, use a GS410C, but there are tabs here designed to fit Toyota, to fit GM with, uh, to, to fit, you know, GM trucks and anywhere there's one of those little Bose two and a half inch speakers. My suggestion is to remove the unnecessary tabs after you've determined which ones you need. Um, because the, you know, once you've broken off the tab, it's, you know, you can't really put it back on. Um, so, so in some of these cars, in some of these cars, Chevy pickups, um, uh, Chevy pickups are, are a good example. If the, if the system, if it's a basic system and the, the factory radio drives the door speaker, which is, which, which I think is a six by nine and the dash speaker in parallel, then splitting that up to do a, a six inch and a tweeter or a six by nine and a tweeter in the dash works fine. But in those cars, when there's a Bose system, the, the crossover, the, the, the dash speaker is run independently of the door speaker and the crossover is at about 250 Hertz. So at the beginning of all of this, I would get a bunch of calls from people who had put a six or a six by nine in the door to replace the factory, the, the factory speaker that was in there and then replace the thing in the dash with a tweeter. But, and it's, it sounded terrible. It sounded terrible. So the reason it sounded terrible is because it's a factory crossover at 250 Hertz, but the tweeter doesn't play down at 250 Hertz. So these systems it's, have it's, no yeah, mid zero mid range. You lost all mid range. It was just highs. Yes. Zero yeah. mid range sounded absolutely terrible. So then we sort of discovered that that Bose is and Harman and a bunch of these other companies are now using a lot of all pass filters. So so trying to use a summing adapter or to sum in a processor to put that door speaker and the dash speaker signals back together is really problematic because the all pass filter cannot be defeated. You cannot un-EQ an all pass filter and the summing didn't work. So you add them together and you still get a big hole in the mid range that you can't fix. So this speaker is designed to, to be a drop in. If you're just gonna install new speakers and leave the Bose amp there, then you, you put this in the dash, you put a 6.9 or 6 in the door and that's it. If if the customer is fine with the imaging of the factory system, but he wants the whole system to play louder, then you put in a four channel amp, you put a GS25 in the dash, you put the six or the 6.9 in the door, and you use the factory processing. And if you put in a DSP amp to do that, then you can re-EQ, you can re-EQ, but you use the factory crossover in the factory uh, all pass filtering uh, to, to give you an image. Um, and then if you wanna upgrade further than that, then you can add a tweeter uh, to the to a tweeter and a passive crossover or another pair of channels, um, you know, and a tweeter in the A pillar. But but this is designed as an upgrade to make those kinds of cars um, where you know Bose and Harman systems primarily, where there's a a, a full range speaker in the dash, um, much easier. Um, so that's what the GS25 is for. You can also remove all the tabs and install this as a. You know, in a you know, in a custom A pillar or or something like that. What um, what, a, what about a center speaker application? Yeah, yes, okay. yeah. So one of these tabs also fits. One of these Toyota tabs also fits the horrible Mercedes. There's a Mercedes. It's a Harman mm -hmm. speaker. Um, it's a little three and a half inch or three inch speaker that that is often a center speaker in a Mercedes, and yeah. that's not a great speaker. The dust cap falls off and all kinds of stuff. But one of these tabs, it's actually this tab right here these two tabs fit that mercedes three inch but yeah center center speakers or or dash speakers in in Harman and bose systems okay so gs8 nd2 this is a this is a shallow eight it's a neo dimium motor it also has the shorting ring on the on the top <clears throat> both these um also has a flat spider um um this is a eight inch woofer with a mounting depth that's just under three inches. Uh, so 75 millimeters for, for, for all of you guys. Um, Neodymium motor, it has 10 millimeters of linear X max. So this is kind of a, a shallow woofer that performs like a, like a normal woofer um, because the world doesn't need any more shallow woofers that don't perform like a normal woofer. Um, these are available in one model. Uh, it's dual two ohm coils. Um, 
dual two ohm coils. So with one of these woofers and a you know one of these woofers at a 500 watt subwoofer amp, uh, you run it at four ohms. Two of these woofers, you can get a you, you know you can get a two ohm load in a box, which is which is about right. In a sealed box, this will go in seven liters. That's a quarter of a cubic foot. Um, and you can do a 14 liter vented box. The infinite baffle is also okay, which means that this is kind of a little woofer that does everything. You can also use it as a mid base. You can also use it as a mid base with a GS25 or a GB25 or a or, you know or a four inch or whatever. Um, uh, box designs are online or they come on the sheet of paper in the box, and and we actually provide the optimum box design. I get calls all the time from people who, who are like, oh yeah, yeah, but I don't want to do the box that's in the manual. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, oh, no, no, not that box. As if, as if the published box should be a box that sucks. I don't really understand that. Um, so the, the, the box that's in the owner's manual is an optimum box, um, but, but you can use these I think there are two of the underseat BMW boxes that these fit. One of them doesn't fit anything, um, but but these sound great under the seat of a BMW. Four of these under the back seat of a of a pickup is is super great. Um, um, you can use them as mid base drivers in the door, and if you've got like old Lexus models or whatever else where you where you need something that you can hang from the rear deck. To replace that infinite baffle sub or in the factory enclosure these things mostly work um these things work there too so you can do just about anything with this and we'll have these back in stock shortly um so gs coaxials um as i mentioned they have a crossover in the basket and it's behind this this plastic part right here there's a choke, there's a cap, and there's another cap right above the terminal uh, in here. These baskets are plastic, uh, ABS and fiberglass, a mix of ABS and fiberglass, and the terminals, which are attached to the PC board, pass through this plastic. If you solder to these terminals, you will flow solder away from the board and the speaker won't work and that's not covered under warranty and it's going to be in big letters in the owner's manual but nobody ever reads the owner's manual. So fair warning here, please don't solder to these, use a, use, use, use a terminal. Um, um, these are also uh, close to two ohms, 2.3, 2.5, 2.8 in, in one case. Uh, in, the, in the six inch, the six by eight and the six by nine, this is an actual one inch soft dome tweeter. <clears throat> the waveguide um, is also carefully designed uh, to boost the output of the tweeter at lower frequencies um, uh, to smooth the transition between the, the, the woofer and the tweeter. And, and they sound great. And, and you'll, you'll be shocked when you, when you listen to them. Um, but all of them are a one-inch dome tweeter, except for the GS42, which is a three-quarter inch dome. These are flat and natural sounding, uh, available in a four-inch, a six-inch, a six-by-eight, and a six-by-nine. But the the tweeter is designed not to stick up past the surround so uh, or not to stick up much past the surround to make it easy to put them behind factory grills so if you turn the speaker to the side you'll see that the tweeter only extends past the top of the surround by about by a couple of millimeters okay. hey and i just got to give you a heads up that you, we have about five minutes left as far as the presentation is concerned five minutes all right i know, I know. okay so now i have to go really fast i have to talk about the fedex dude um, so G60S is a component system. Um, this is the one where everything comes in the box. It includes uh, kind of a similar mounting system with this, uh, you know, with with the spring and whatnot. Uh, this also the six inch includes that multi adapter. The crossovers are separate. There is a six a six dB per octave low pass filter for the woofer and a twelve dB per octave high pass filter with tweeter protection for the tweeter. But they're in separate boxes because sometimes tweeters go in the car and woofers go in the doors. Um, and running those wires back and forth can be a real pain. Um, so, so these are these are little separate crossover boxes. Uh, they can only be plugged in one way. The terminals are already on the wires, so this is super easy. These things sound great, um, and you can take this tweeter apart so that you just have the tweeter, uh, so that it can be the, the little tweeter element with no grill and no cup and all of that, so that you can mount it in factory locations in A pillars and and whatnot pretty easily. 
So one, the last thing I want to talk about, we only have a few minutes to do it, is one of the things that makes audio frog speakers different um, than, than many others is the kind of testing that we do to make sure that they last um, and that, they're, and that they're, they're good when you get them. So we do a whole bunch of rigorous environmental and performance testing, and all this is designed to simulate 50,000 miles in a moving car. Yes, we've included Canada because uh, our uh, hot and high and low temperature testing um, is even colder than it ever gets in Canada. We also do thermal shock, which is which is from super hot to, to super cold. So we do a whole bunch of tests on these things when we're designing them. The first of them is a life test, and this is extreme heat and humidity. Um, um, to extreme cold and no humidity because there's no humidity when it's super cold. It includes a, a, a thermal shock cycle and this is two weeks long. So so we and the units have to be operating. Um, uh, we expose these things to ultraviolet light um, uh, and humidity um, at the same time. And this is kind of like being the speakers being trapped in, in a you know, inside of a car in the sun in Alabama during the summer. We do vibration testing. We strap these things to a, to a, uh, to a vibration table and test them at two Gs in uh, two axes. And the reason for this is because cars bounce around, right? Um, and it's, it's, it's fun to watch initial samples on this vibration test because literally stuff that is not glued down flies across the room. Um, so, so we put speakers on these vibration uh, tables to make sure that the pole piece is, you know, the, to, to make sure that the, that the tweeter post is going to stay glued in or that the, the little passive crossover parts that are in passive crossovers or inside the basket of these speakers um, uh, aren't going to fly off, you know, when the car is bouncing down the road. There's no way to ensure absolute perfection, but we do everything we can um, to, to, to try to make sure that you guys don't have silly failures in the field. And if there is a problem, I want to know about it and I need the speaker back so I can send it back um, uh, for analysis and, and uh, for, you know, process changes. Our power test is lasts a week, hundred hours. Um, and we test RMS and peak power that, that for which the speaker is rated concurrently at the same time. So if you see 100 watts and 300 watts, that means that we've used um, we've used noise. It's like pink noise, but it's shaped so that the so that the average power of that noise is, or the average power of what comes out of the amplifier is the same as our RMS, and the peak is the same as peak. So we don't we don't make up a peak which is two or three times whatever. We actually test for that, and then we do drop tests. We drop speakers. We drop speakers in the packages. We smash packages in a compression test because these things get stacked up and transported across the ocean um, where it's super humid. Uh, we subject the packaging to a portion of this heat and humidity testing. And all this is designed so that when the, when the product shows up at your store, you can be super confident that, that, uh, that it's not going to bite you in the butt. Um, we should probably stop there and ask questions. I think I talked enough about test gear that we don't need to go through that again. So if anybody's got a question, maybe we have 30 seconds to try to answer. Well, you're going to get it from either myself or from um, uh, Kelly. Can you see us now, uh, Andy? Just go no, ahead and take off your screen. I have, to, I have to be the technologist in order to do that. Yeah, so I'm going to... No, I don't want to do that. Wait, here we are. Stop sharing. There we go. I'm back. Gotcha. All right, hey. perfect. Thank you for the presentation, Andy. Um, learned a awesome. lot. And that, you know, I think my takeaway from that whole presentation is the attention to detail, the thought process, especially when it comes to the design of the actual installation. Yeah. It's one thing about putting a lot of thought resources and engineering towards the sound and the design of the sound, but to put yeah, all that- easy. You just follow the rules. Yeah, I know. But then the other side of things is you've down to how you can separate the trim so you can put fabric in there and it will still fit. Like all those little details can yeah. only be thought of from somebody who's actually been behind the screwdriver. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that that's very, you know, people would appreciate that. Dealers would appreciate that knowing that, you know, the, the mind and the resources, the engineering, the ideas that went behind these products comes from that kind of place. Unfortunately, you know, we're virtual. We can't hear them, but based on, um, your examples. I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited to get finally be able to travel and get to a place where I can actually listen to these things. You can. You can hear them if you buy them. 
<laughs> I, I could definitely, definitely could, absolutely. Oh, you gotta uh, just buy a pair, man. It could be I'll just buy a pair. You know what? Go ahead, put it on my credit card, you, Kelly. You know where to get them. I know where to get them. <laughs> um, yeah. What is the message? You I mean for a lot of dealers? You know, I'll be honest. A lot of dealers. Ooh, audio frog. It's like, ooh, audio frog. What do you have? What message do you have for them? Well, so the message is that we've we've done as good a job as I know how to do in putting products together that will help them, and um, we're also committed and I spend a lot of time uh, and I've been really lucky. I was an installer and I got a job at Harmon, right? So my office was like down the hall from Richard Small. So when I needed to, to ask a question about Teal and Small parameters, I got to go ask Richard Small, right? So I'm the luckiest installer ever in the history of, of car audio. And, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world. There's a lot in here because I was like around those people. So, so I'm pretty committed to trying to help teach people how to how to how to do this and making products that make doing it doing it easier. easier. Um, um, so with Audio Frog stuff, you get you get great products, you get help, um, and we we try to do business. Look, I'm an old guy; I don't have time for a bunch of BS. So, so we try to be as helpful as we can be in a really straightforward way. Um, um, so ask a question and you either get the right answer because I know it, or you get, I don't know, but I'll go find out. Right. Cool. So we don't make stuff up because making stuff up may sell a product once, but the minute that somebody figures out that you've made stuff up and sent them on a goose chase because you didn't have the right information and you couldn't, you, then you couldn't admit that you didn't have it or do the extra work to go get it is the last time because, because we're all trying to make a living here. Right. We're trying to put our kids to school. We're trying to buy shoes. We're, we're trying to get a Bentley or, you know, whatever you want. Um, but this is about this is about products that you can count on and information that steers you in the right direction. And that's really sort of what we're what we're committed to providing. That's the mantra. Thank you so much, Andy. Always a Thank pleasure you. to have you. Looking forward well, to having well, you again. Hey. This was the last Zoom. Last Zoom <laughs> final. This is it. <laughs> Take Two care weeks now. Ago, somebody calls me and says, dude, you got to do Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A farewell tour. <laughs> Say bye. Thanks, Andy. I love that guy, dude. He's, uh, he's pretty entertaining. And you're right. Always learning something new whenever uh, you're around Andy. Every time. He's he's a wealth of knowledge for sure. Um, yeah. Audi Frog. Cool product. Unique mind and ideas behind the product and uh, and quite honestly take the time go online there's some great reviews of audio frog it's it's pretty overwhelming great reviews reach out to your sales rep in your area and uh he can help you out as well all right um we're running a little bit tight on time but it's you're the boss kelly you want to do the promos now oh let's roll let's, let's roll, roll, roll. roll. All all right. Right. no we'll, we'll roll to roll right through the next one We'll do them again at Excess Power, so everybody knows. Okay, sounds good. We're going to announce them at Excess Power at the end of that one, so Check everybody should be there to watch. All right. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Hey, see you soon. All right. Andy Waymeyer from Audio Frog. Hope you guys got your learn on on that one. I know I certainly did. And uh, another unique and you know high-level, high-end performance brand from Importel. So um, looking forward to the next session. Thanks for tuning in on this one. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect.